Hello, welcome back to Nick Lange's Comic Corner, classic slash non-classic. This is episode number 207, uh, 217, and my 150th double shot. Well, one Batman and one Superman type of trade. First up, it's Superman, Camelot Falls, Volume 1, written by Kurt Busiek, and artwork by uh, Carlos Pacito and Jesus Moreno. Now, this is basically, in a way, the first story arc, in a way, for Superman, right after uh, the events of Up, Up, and Away. Yeah, th this is still like the old event, like Superman's back, and they're trying to, well, pretty much people are pretty much a good used to it, and there's this uh, magician guy who's got this uh, foresight, thinking that in order to save the world, uh, civilization has to fall. That's the whole point of the Camelot Falls uh, name. Uh, plus, you get the debut of a couple of things. First of which is the modern is the 21st century version of the Science Police. The Science Police. Now, some people when they think of Science Police, people think of Legion of Superheroes, but this is present day, and there isn't a Legion of Superheroes. So, and the difference between the future version and the past version is that the present very version is a federal agency, while um, the Legion of Superheroes version is a sort of an interplanetary version. And plus you got a debut of a new villain named Subject 17, though it's spelled Subject. Uh, S-U-B-J-E-K-T. Basically you have him, in like, I think it's like one of our villain makes debut. Like basically a couple of very minor Superman villains. No really big ones. But the artwork is still really good. Here's a... Um, Here's a cover. Here, here's basically what Subject 17 looks like. Yeah. I'm actually showing stuff a little bit longer than I should. That I have been doing because I got a complaint about that. So that's why I held up a little longer than usual. That's just a sample of the interior artwork. But this is still really good. Um, Superman is completely in character. And... And the hot thing about this issue, if you open this up, the first thing you'll see is Lois Lane wearing nothing but a t-shirt and her panties. I'm not going to show it because I'm not, um, because I'm sure that probably people who are younger than I am probably watch this. And if you want to see that, you got to read, you got to read this. But this is still really good. Um, you get some guest star appearances by, um, well... Pretty much this is a straightforward uh, Superman story. Plus you get uh, uh, Lana Lang show up in here as well. Uh, plus with some new uh, insect queen. But despite that, this is still really good. Um, yeah, the insect queen is okay, but still good. Um, I give this one a 8.5 out of 10. Still good, but not entirely perfect. I give I took an extra point out because... Well, the answer to Queen thing was not very interesting. The the magician guy was a lot more interesting. Yeah. All right. Next up is Batman Arkham Two Face. Yep. And there is a a bunch of writers in this one, basically because this is a collection of Two Face stories over the course of him being around. He's been around since 1942. So basically, his first appearance was exactly. Uh, 74 years ago. So you got almost a 75-year-old character. And the writing in here is, um, Pierre J. Tomasi, who did the Batman Robin one-shot. Uh, Kurt Swan. Uh, let's see here. You have, uh, Bill Finger, who does the early Tipta Comics issues. Uh, you have the, you have Jim Shooter, the former editor-chief of Marvel, he does an issue of World's Finest Comics. You have Denny O'Neill doing his first um, Bronze Age appearance. Uh, Jerry Conway does an issue of uh, Detective Comics and Batman, which basically at the time was serialized. Um, th those ones came out in 82. In 86, you have Doug Moak uh, doing uh, the, two issues of, the two issues of Batman, which is basically... Uh, 397, 398, and took the comics 360, 563, 564. It's a four-part story. It's, uh, really good. Um, you also have Batman Two-Face, which is written by Jay and the Mathis. Uh, Batman Chronicles, which is done by Charlie Fush. I'm not really familiar with the writer. 
Uh, the Joker Silent One shot is done by uh, David Hayne, and of course, Peter J. Demasi does um, the Batman of Robin one shot. Now, the whole point of this is simply because, well, last year the final game for the Batman Arkham series was released, Batman Arkham Knight. So, so, so decided though, one of the two trades, uh, I'm sure Barry DC is like, hmm, last game for Batman Arkham is coming out, so I'm going to release trades of villains who appear in the books, who appear in the games. Uh, they did one for Riddler. This is one for Two Face. And believe it or not, the uh, the first three issues in here are his first is is his first three appearances he ever made in the comics. <clears throat> Here's a sample of the uh, the artwork at the time. Yeah, his debut story is called The Crimes of Two Face. Yep, from Detective Comics number sixty six. Yep, and they pretty much now this first page, I gotta say, is a, is one part of his origin story that they kept intact for years up until uh, Pierre de Tomasi rewrote it for New Fifty Two. It's a completely different one now. This page right here, I just showed this page right here of him basically be on trial of 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 having a Somewhere in, on, on the witness stand, and throwing ass in his face. The way the way the way it's interpreted in this very pan, this very page. This has not. Cha uh, it's only changed a little bit, but not very much. Uh, the only change they make to it is that um, Dent was standing directly in front of him. This is of course in Long Halloween. Dent was standing in front of the guy, and he threw the ass in his face. And here you have. Uh, Batman trying to stop him. Now this particular thing. Now if you saw Batman Forever, they kind of showed the scene in the film. Uh, basically, it, if you if you look at this scene uh, and you uh, watch Batman Forever, it's like it's like they kind of pulled. Uh, they just took this scene, it's kind of kind of modernized it a little bit, and gave it a spin on. If you watch Batman Forever. Now, the whole point. Now these three issues are his only appearances that he makes in the Golden Age of Comics. You know, from the 30s to like the around the mid 50s. Yeah, these three appearances are the only ones he makes because after the, the two two appearances after this one, his last Golden Age appearance is when he gets his face restored. Um, in the end of Two Face, which is the end of all the Two Face stuff, and Two Face disappears from many. Now, Harvey Dent, on the other hand, encounters many impossible Two Faces over the course of the next 20 years after that. Before he himself comes back, being as Two Face for one issue of World's Finest Comics, and then you have this brilliantly done uh, issue of Batman for um, let's see, where is it? Yeah, uh, no, that's not it. It is uh, beautiful artwork by Neil Adams. Here it is. And by the way, um, the comic shop where I, where I, uh, not far from where I live, uh, actually has this very individual issue. This is Batman 234. This is the first Bronze Age appearance of Two Face. And this cover is done by Neil Adams, but the writing in the book is done by Denny O'Neill. This is just a sample of the first four pages. This artwork is freaking gorgeous. I am a huge fan of Neil Adams' artwork, so I appreciate the fact they actually put this in here. But this is great. You also have Jerry Conway and Doug Moak basically throwing their things into the mix. And um, one thing I noticed, though, is they change, uh, well, they have uh, Don Norton who does the artwork, which I think this is the same artist who did the uh, Tomb of Dracula series from Marvel in the 70s. Now, even though this is a lot of collection of stories, these are a lot of, pretty much all the stories in, if you read them, they're all really good. And I do recommend this specifically to Batman fans and people who are fans of Harvey Dent. A.K.A. Two Face. Now, a casual fan who I'm uh, reading some early appearances, who who who, is, who actually likes Two Face, even though he only appears for like one video game. I don't think he appeared for Arkham Knight, but he did appear in Arkham City. If you're interested in the character and his backstory, um, I do recommend this. If you're a fan of the Arkham Knight series, you probably, if you want to just just want to read about Two Face, just him, not about Batman, this is a good place to start. And so, I give this book. Because this book is filled with every single story in here is really good. 
including that, including so the one. Sh the basically is like three one shots. Everything else in here, it has an issue of an ongoing series, with the exception of three one shots. And the the artwork is, is consistent the whole time. And this this book doesn't collect every single appearance by Harvey Dent, but a lot of his best stories. It's like it's like the greatest of. It's like uh, the way they would Joker, where they were the greatest Joker stories ever told. This is kind of like the greatest Two Face stories ever told. But a lot of the time, he didn't appear that much in the comics over the course of the period of time. I mean, at some points, he appears a lot more. Like, one of the most significant appearances is in the pages of Gotham Central in a two-part story where he outed uh, Rene Montoya as a lesbian and started a trend of, basically, of Two-Face. Now, Rene doesn't hate Two-Face doesn't like him very much. He doesn't. He doesn't hate him for doing. He just doesn't really like him for too much. But that's also a good Two Face story as well. But this is basically Two Face on an individual scale, not a uh, part of like a grand overall series. Of course, like Gotham City Central stories written by Edward Baker and Greg Rucka. But despite that, that was a good series, and this is good too. I give this. And I haven't done this in a while. I'm giving this a 10. Because they're all good stories. Nothing no, nothing bad about any of them. The artwork is fantastic for every single one of these stories. Um, that's one thing I do like about collections like this. Like, if a collection like this does its perfect work, every single story not only has good writing, but also good artwork as well, that is where the, that's where the thing gets a 10. If you do like a collection of stories, like like a tales of type of thing, if it does it right, it gets a ten. If it doesn't, it gets a lower range. So I give this one a ten out of ten. Great, I highly recommend it. All right. Uh, stay tuned for the next episode. We'll never get a chance to do it. Which should be episode two eighteen and double shot. Hopefully double shot one fifty one. Okay. Till then, see you there. Bye.